Pinder, Pinder, Pinder. Me and Pinder go way back to the days of secondary school and we used to have this kind of forward fringe with a little bit of a tail at the back. I don't know if you man remember the tail. I know you came in and you said, look, I just want to fade. I want to look, you know, I want a fresh fade, but we do things a little bit differently. The first thing I'm doing, Pinder, really is identifying the problem areas. We call them the fixed variables, i.e. the things that we can't change. I can't change your growth pattern, Pinder. I can't change the density around your hairline. I can't change your head shape. So really, I need to work off all of these categories. What we want to do is create a little bit of a fuller appearing hairline because the density isn't quite what it used to be, Pinder. I know there's a lot of barbers out there that approach a haircut exactly the same regardless who it's on. We don't do things that way. We let the fixed variables dictate the haircut. What's the fixed variable in this case? It's the front hairline. And we're going to address this area first and then cater the haircut around that. So Pinder, you might think that this is a little bit drastic. We're going right in there with a point cutting technique and we're going almost right up to the front center hairline. I want to tell you Pinder, there's no need to worry. The aim here is to build weight on the front. And I know that when I look at your front hairline, the center is much thicker than the corners. So of course the aim here is to build some weight there. Just taking some sections, I'm bringing the hair down to the hairline to its natural form, and I'm just chopping into it a little bit to see how it reacts. When I point into the hair, it's almost like using a pencil on paper. It's just a little bit softer, There's, it's more forgiving. I wanna see how it reacts. And I know that the shorter that fringe looks, the fuller it's gonna look. I don't want too much tension on the hair. Remember, I'm just trying to sketch that outline. So if I put too much tension on the hair, the hair's gonna react. It's gonna loosen up when I release the comb and completely change. So I wanna have a loose amount of tension on there. Remember, the aim for this haircut is to create a fuller appearance on the front hairline. It's important that I consider my choice of length pin there. If I go too short with your hair, you're going to be able to see right to the scalp. If I leave the hair too long, it's going to start to separate. If I leave that front hairline too weighty, it's going to look like one of them dons from back in the early 2000s where they jowl their fringe down. Technique-wise on the top pin there, because I want to leave that length around the corners, I'm going to be utilizing over direction. It's really simple. It just means that we're pulling the hair from the outside into the center or gradually into the center. And of course, that hair on the corners has to travel a further distance. So you're going to create a shape with longer length at the corners. And then we want to build weight on the front. Now all I'm doing is using the guide from the top to connect to the back. I want to push the weight quite high. The higher that weight goes, the fuller the corner of your hairline is going to look.
barbers, stylists, hairdressers, whatever out there that will kind of start one area, then move sporadically onto another area. I'm not doing that. I am not moving on from the top until I'm happy with the length. So you can see pin down, I'm just messing it around. I'm just seeing how it's reacting to that choice of length. I'm considering, do I need to take it a little bit shorter? Does it need to be longer next time? These are all the things that are going through my head. And I'm just chopping into those corners to soften them a bit. I don't want you to look like a Lego character. So look, I've already dealt with all my shape pinder. I've cut the top, I've created a shape through the back, and I've created a weight line on the sides. So now all I've got to do is meet that weight line. I'm using a number two because I want to keep enough color to blend into. I also don't want to be too sure that I affect the head shape. So I'm just using a little bit of a thinning scissor there just to loosen up that density around the front. Again, I'm just personalizing, so I'm kind of cutting in, seeing if it looks more even, shaking the hair up and then going back in again. Pinda, I can't lie, your hairline looking saved, man. <laughs> when I'm putting this zero line in Pinda, a lot of people, they go, oh, I'll put it mid, or I'll put it low, or I'll put it high. Now, I'm kind of using your natural features to determine where I'm going to put the line. In this case, I'm using the arc of your eyebrow through to the back and dropping it down by the occipital bone. Where most people go wrong with fading is they forget technique. Fading really is about the motion that you're using the clipper. Now, in a lot of the YouTube videos back in the day, they'd be like, flick your wrist. I don't even remember back in the day, I'd be like, you gotta flick your wrist. But now I'm less so about flicking the wrist. The motion all comes from the shoulder. So every line that I'm putting in, I'm flicking out into the previous line. You know, a lot of people, they kind of put one line in, then put another line in. But really we're, we're blending, it's a technique. You know, fading isn't a step-by-step -step guide, it's a technique. So you've got to get used to that technique. So you can see I'm blending and I'm rolling my clipper off the round of the head. Look, fading can be really difficult. And that's because a lot of it is down to technique and the mindless minutia that goes into that technique. So I'm using a down fading technique. And the reason for that is it would make no sense for me to fade upwards. We started the haircut on the top. So we've prepared, every bit we've cut has prepared us for the next step. So the number two guard is preparing us for the number one guard. The number one guard is preparing us for that open clipper. Now that open clipper is then gonna blend the zero line out. So you can see that we're working downwards and each step is preparing us for the next step. There's a million videos out there on how to fade, but Really, I think this is a pretty simple technique to follow and it gives you a good end result. Work down. If you're really struggling with getting lines out, then it's probably best that you work down and try and put as little lines in as possible. So what you're witnessing here is one of my biggest pet hates, the forehead frown. Now, for some reason, men, when they're looking in the mirror at the barbershop or at home or they're posing, for some reason they frown tenses a muscle in the side of your head. Any change to the surface of the head, if it's moving around, if a muscle's tense, is gonna look completely different when you're relaxed. So I try and say, look in there, relax man, relax a little bit. Just look down and try not to frown because it's just gonna affect the haircut.
So the technique of fading is exactly the same on the beard as it is on the hair. So I'm blending off your cheekbone, Pinder. Now if I blend off your cheekbone, it's gonna add a little bit of width to your jawline. So it's gonna make your jaw look a little bit more, you know, chad. You're gonna get a bit more of a chad jawline if I do this, that sigma ting. And that's what you're gonna get. I'm gonna give you that sigma jawline right now, Pinder. And it's mad what a beard can do, because I remember when you didn't have a beard and uh, you know, a line in the correct place can completely change your face shape. Top lip, I'm just using a number one guard with the grey to remove a little bit of bulk before I go in with my detailer and line up above the lip. If I didn't do that, the moustache might look a little bit too thick. So removing a little bit bulk first just prepares us for that next step. So now I'm just bussing out my wireless detailer and I'm just touching above your top lip pin there. Now this is usually where barbers mess up the most. Some people go too high or too low. If the beard line's too low, it's gonna elongate the shape of the face. So from the side, it's gonna look like he's got a double chin. Similarly, if you bring the line up too high, if it's gonna condense the face down, it's not gonna look right. So what I'm doing is following the natural curvature of the crease in your neck. Just using a, a little clipper over comb technique with my uh, with my detailer, just removing a little bit of bulk from that neckline. Man, you see the news today. So how you gonna tell these little kids that school's the way? So now I'm just, I'm just gowning Pinder up really. I'm just tucking one corner into his top, trying not to stretch out his collar too much. And then I'm just tucking the other corner in, crossing it over. And now I'm just applying a little bit of shaving gel onto the neck. This is just to soften the beard hair and, and provide a layer of lubrication between Pinder and the blade. My aim with this beard, Pinday, is to make it look as fresh as possible and not completely chop up your neck. I'm putting all the necessary precautions in place so that that doesn't happen. And one of the precautions is this hot towel. Number one, it brings the blood to the surface of your skin. And number two, it softens the beard hairs. So if you've ever sat in a barber chair and they've started shaving your neckline without putting a hot towel on, it's probably gonna cause you some irritation on the skin. So all we're doing here, Pinda, is just preparing for something that might cause irritation, softening the beard hairs. It also feels fire. It's a nice little addition to the service. Most people struggle with this technique, a backhand technique, but really if you follow all the preparation, the hot towel, the shaving gel, and you do it correctly, it's super easy to do. Also, there needs to be enough tension on the skin. If there's not enough tension, it's gonna pull on the hair. If it is pulling on the hair, then it's likely that the preparation wasn't good enough. I don't wanna take that top line too low. You know, there's a lot of barbers out there and it, they do a really curved kind of round top beard line, or they drop it way too low and it looks like a chin strap, like a Craig David style chin strap. You ain't gonna suit that. So I'm trying to keep the, the line as high as possible while making it sharp. So of course I want it sharp, but I also want it as high as possible. Look, it's really uncomfortable if you're a client walking down the road and you've still got product left on your face. I'm using another hot towel to remove any dirt, any shave gel, or any hair that's left on the face. Yeah, yeah. 
So what I used to hate when I walked out of a barber shop is, you know, they might put a little bit of product on this massive beard that I've got, but it'd kind of sit on my face. So I'd go outside and I'd have this like thick layer of, of like cream sat on my face. So to combat that, what I do is I dry the skin first. I'm going in with a really light aftershave balm. This is just to stop anything from touching the skin. It's also to cool the skin down and reduce any potential inflammation that might have been left by the friction of the razor. And again, I'm hitting it with the dryer, drying the beard off and drying that aftershave balm into the skin. So when he walks out of the barbershop, he won't feel like there's a layer of product left on his skin. It's all absorbed. Everything that is absorbed into the skin. Now I'm just very lightly with my clipper, freehanding over the beard, using a little bit of clipper over comb. Really, I'm just personalizing. I'm just detailing the beard a little bit. I'm going in with a little bit of our Blunt Barber Salt Spray. And all that's gonna do is create a bit of a textured finish. We don't want it to look shiny. We want it to look a little bit rugged, a little bit textured. So I'm just going in with that salt spray and I'm drying that salt spray in. And I'm just using my hand to dry it. You don't need a brush. I'm just kind of roughing the hair up. I'm just touching up, doing a bit of final personalizing, maybe chopping into a few of the denser areas, dusting them off looking at the fade do i need to touch a little bit there on the fade i'm stepping back like a good artist does they step back from the subject and have a look from a distance and that's all i'm doing i'm just stepping back and and touching any little bits up Remember, I want the finish of this haircut to be as matte as possible, really, Pinder. Your hair naturally is shiny anyway, so I don't want to add any product that's going to weigh it down too much and clump up. I went in with the salt spray and dried that in, and now I'm just finishing with a little bit of our powder. You could buy it on our website. Make sure that you're dispersing the powder evenly throughout the hair. You don't want too much in one place, too much in another place. Make sure it's evenly distributed throughout the whole top of the haircut. Look at the before, look at the after. Is it possible for Pinder to look any better? I don't think it is. I mean, what other haircut's gonna work for him? We didn't just go in with the same approach we do with everyone else. We used his fixed variables to determine the best approach. So it's unique. Although it's a fade, it's the best possible fade that's gonna suit you, Pinder. This helps show that there are many different ways to approach a haircut, but I'm really trying to show you the thought process behind the approach. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this trim. Is it flames? Is it dead? Could it be better? Let me know. Look guys, do not be afraid of trying new things. Try a different approach, try a different technique. Maybe it didn't look the way you wanted it to look. That is what it is, that's life. And if that don't work that time, you reassess and then, and then, you go again, you go again until you get it the way you want it to look, yeah? And then all you do is you start refining, you slim the process down, yeah? Simple, simple. Anyway, subscribe to the channel, subscribe down below. We've got a lot more videos coming up. We're gonna be doing probably one video a month similar to this, but completely different styles every time. And remember to subscribe and hit that like button, yeah? Hit me with a like. This is my first video. Follow us on TikTok, Blunt Barber. If you wanna buy any of the products, whatever, whatever, bluntbarber.com. And Pinda, listen, I appreciate you for this video. Listen, you're gonna see when this channel takes off. You were the first person on the channel. Big up, big respect to all of you, yeah? Much appreciated. See you next time.